heel pain. Understanding heel pain is important. Heel pain is an extremely common complaint with several common causes. It is important to make the correct diagnosis of the cause of heel pain so that appropriate treatment can be given to the patient. So what are the causes of heel pain? These are the common causes and locations of heel pain. The most common cause is plantar fasciitis. Another cause, a rare cause, Baxter nerve compression. A third cause is fat pad atrophy. Another cause is Achilles tendinitis. Another cause is Haglan deformity. Another cause is stress fracture of the calcaneus. Another cause is tarsal tunnel syndrome. And finally, lumbosacral spine radiculopathy can cause heel pain. You can see that the sites and the location from different causes of the heel pain appear to be close to each other. So it is difficult to determine the source of the pain, and this makes the diagnosis difficult or confusing. The most common cause is plantar fasciitis. Plantar fasciitis is irritation and swelling of the thick tissue on the bottom of the foot. This fascia can become inflamed and painful, making walking more difficult. Plantar fasciitis is most severe in the morning when the patient first stands on their feet. The startup pain symptoms is more severe for the first steps and it persists with activity through the day. Pain symptoms will intensify with prolonged exercise or standing. There will be tenderness over the plantar medial heel with negative tenel sign. X-ray may show a plantar heel spur. Plantar fasciitis is usually associated with a tight heel cord. Treatment night splints, physiotherapy, cushion heel silicone inserts, cortisone injection, Achilles tendon stretching. Then we'll talk about Baxter nerve. Baxter nerve is the first branch of the lateral plantar nerve. The Baxter nerve contributes to 20% of all heel pain cases, and this nerve provides motor innervation to the abductor digiti minimi muscle. When the nerve is affected by compression, the symptoms appear to look like plantar fasciitis. The nerve courses vertically between the abductor hallucis and the quadratus plantae muscles. Then it makes a 90 degree horizontal turn coursing laterally beneath the calcaneus to innervate the abductor digiti minimi muscle. Involvement of the Baxter nerve may affect running athletes, causing pain on the medial plantar aspect of the foot. Entrapment of Baxter nerve is usually overlooked or misdiagnosed. How about the fat pad atrophy? The fat pad cushions the calcaneus, and in this condition, that fat is thinned, so the calcaneus loses its cushion. The condition is common in the elderly people and can cause significant pain while walking. There is always a history of steroid injection. The injections are commonly used to treat plantar fasciitis and it can cause this heel pad atrophy. The patient will have pain with walking. The pain is deep central, non-radiating, 
plantar heel pain worsens when the patient is barefoot and resolve when the patient walks in their toes with tenderness at the central aspect of the heel pad. Treatment, shoe wear modification, apply external padding to the heel. Achilles tendinitis. Patient will have an ankle pain for several months. It is a chronic condition. Patient will complain of pain and the swelling because the tendon is thickened with tenderness to palpation above the top of the calcaneus. Treatment, usually immobilization and eccentric closed chain strengthening exercises. How about Haglund's deformity? The Haglund deformity is an insertional calcification and exostosis at the insertion of the Achilles tendon. Patient is usually treated by physiotherapy and anti-inflammatory medication. Don't inject through the tendon, you can inject around the tendon. And if the symptoms persist beyond six months, then surgery may be needed with excision of the Haglund exostosis and the insertional calcification. And if more than 50% of the Achilles tendon is detached to remove the posterior superior calcaneus prominence, then the tendon becomes weak and should be secured to the bone of the calcaneus with suture anchors or tendon transfer to bridge the gap. Flexor hallucis longus is the tendon that is used in this situation. So the operation will be an Achilles tendon debridement, calcaneus exostectomy, and flexor hallucis longus tendon transfer, especially if the tendon degeneration is greater than 50% of the width. Stress fracture of the calcaneus can occur due to overuse injuries. Patient will complain of heel pain, severe weight-bearing pain. The pain increase with walking and running. The pain does not improve throughout the day, and each step is painful. The pain is more with medial to lateral compression of the calcaneal tuberosity. X-ray can be normal. We may need to get an MRI to diagnose the stress fracture of the calcaneus, and the treatment is boot or cast immobilization. Tarsal tunnel syndrome, parathesia, numbness in the plantar foot, Symptoms are worse with activity and the parathesia may wake the patient up at night. There are multiple causes for compression of the posterior tibial nerve. One of them is a ganglion cyst, which is a known cause for tarsal tunnel syndrome. Check the MRI. The patient will respond well and have a favorable outcome to excision of the ganglia, and the patient may have resolution of the tarsal tunnel symptoms. Then lumbosacral spine radiculopathy. Pain on the lateral side of the foot can result from L5 to S1 herniated disc. That will cause radiculopathy. The S1 nerve root supplies the lateral aspect of the foot. Pain on the lateral side of the foot can result from L5 S1 herniated disc. The S1 nerve root involvement causes decreased sensation and pain on the lateral aspect of the foot. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.